Okay, I'm calling the Board of Education special meeting to order. Um, and the first thing we need to do is adopt and approve the agenda. Move to adopt and approve the agenda. I second. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Moving on to comments from the public. So what we are going to do, if you wish to make a public comment, is we are going to open up the chat for just temporarily for about a minute, minute and a half. So if you wish to make a chat, you'll need to do the following. You'll need to give us your, your full name. If you use a, a, ha, a um, handle other than your name in your Zoom link, please let us know what that handle is so we can find you. And your topic. Um, just one or two words about what the topic is, because we need to, to coordinate um, um, the public comment. We've had six hours plus of discussion on the issue related to distance learning. We are not going, because of that reason, we're not going to go beyond 20 minutes on that particular item. So if we have 10 people, each, each person will get two minutes. If we have 20 people, you need to be quick. Each person will get a minute to speak and speak their mind on it. Um, so Ashley, just to con confirm, is chat open right now? Chat is opening, hold on, right now. So you should now as attendees be able to chat with panelists. So the chat is your, the only thing you're doing, you're not actually chatting with any panelists. You're just, you're just adding your name if you'd like to speak and what your topic is. And if you use a different Zoom handle than your name, we would need to know that. So it's like the yellow comment card at a face-to-face at a -face meeting. Like a yellow comment card. Yes. Once we close this, we're done with the um, taking comment cards. So. I only see one. Yeah, let's give another minute. We're gonna give it, we're gonna give it another full minute. Okay. Yeah. If you just hopped on and we are, we are taking, um, if you wish to speak, you're, you please go to the chat box. It's right smack dab in the middle at the bottom of the bar. Please include your name. If, you're, if your Zoom handle is different than your name, then we need to, you need to let us know what that handle is. And just one or two words on your topic. We'll give another 30 seconds. There's been a lot of conversation on this, obviously. This will be the last call. Please close it up. Close it, Ashley. Um, no, that person. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. So we have three. Um, we have three items. Individuals. You, each individual will have four minutes to speak um, because we just have three. I, I think we just take them in order. Mm -hmm. um, you see the order on there, on there, Ellen? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna call on Phoebe Ellis first, Task Force reopening, for Reopening Schools. Am I there? Do you guys hear me? Yeah, yep. We do. Hi, everyone. Hey, Daisy. Um, so thank you again. I know you've all spent many, many hours on this subject as well as um, I have to speak on behalf of parents and students. We also have spent many hours and time and frustration discussing education on our children's education. And I, I do believe from my bottom of my heart that parents are very invested and interested in their children's education from a good point of view. 
Um, I understand that tonight's meeting is based on trying to decide a timeline for distance learning going forward. And I am advocating for a very short timeline, perhaps at the six week grading period, reevaluating the efforts of distance learning, how it's going, the ability to reopen at that point, understanding that at this point it is out of the Petaluma City School District's control on when that potential hybrid in-person learning could happen. Uh, but I am advocating against having an entire semester of distance learning to make that decision at this point seems very premature. I feel that at this point to date, um, it's been very clear that parents, there was a survey, one survey in early June, I believe, and 85% of parents responded of the respondents that they were inclined to support some sort of a hybrid learning situation. I've listened into the recent study sessions as well as the webinar yesterday. Most parents indicated that they are very interested in getting back into an in-person school education system. To date, it seems that the parent-student perspective has been ignored and almost and not included in any sort of planning. I do recognize that you've had recent study sessions, but that was the most recent point where we allowed for parents to even intervene or to communicate their thoughts. Um, the parents and students are very integral stakeholders in this district, and you certainly need their engagement to be successful in any learning model. I am proposing that the district develop a safe return to school task force of some sort as soon as possible to refocus the efforts to returning to our campuses. The task force could include healthcare professionals, parents, students, administration, teachers, um, classified staff, business leaders, custodial maintenance professionals, construction, rental, a rental company, a marketing, a communication professional. It would be a variety of people all on a volunteer basis, that would be, obviously we would report to the trustees weekly or whatever is indicated, uh, but their main focus would be how to safely reopen the schools. Taking into consideration all health and safety guidelines by the county, the state, what, federal, whatever is, is sort of ruling at that time. Um, it's time to refocus the messaging and the efforts towards in-person learning. The, the negative messaging that's come out of Petaluma City Schools in regard to deaths and fear of students and teachers and staff is really becoming overwhelming to parents and students. Education should be a positive influence in their lives. And at this point, all is we're hearing is there's too many risks. It's too scary. Someone might die. And in, in my opinion, as a parent who's very aware of the health issues, I'm interested in my students learning and in learning in a safe environment, and we can do that. I believe that all interests and parties agree that students learn better in the classroom with in-person interactions with teachers, staff, and other students. The community, the Petaluma community is very invested in our young people, so let's tap into our resources. Let's use our expertise and financial assistance to safely reopen our schools. Our young people are our future leaders, and we can all agree that we need strong, bold, courageous leaders. And our students deserve to learn and develop in engaging, exciting, and collaborative environments. In my opinion, and many other parents and student opinions, education is worth the risk. And I am happy, and I've always been offered, I'm happy to offer time, point of views, opinions, what, whatever you need. And, and there's a lot of parents out there that want to help and are willing to support. So, so please utilize those resources. Thank you. Thank you, Phoebe. Um, Josh, uh, I'm afraid to say your last name. Bahagiar. I'm sorry if I just if I tortured your name. That's okay. That's okay. You wouldn't you wouldn't be the first. It's uh, <laughs> okay. It's it's Buh it's Buhajer. Roger. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And I just want to say, um, I definitely echo, you know, the last um, participant who just spoke. Um, our, our, we have two kids that are currently enrolled at Pengrove Elementary School, 
and um, must say first off that we believe that they've done a, a wonderful job, you know, given the circumstances, you know, to, to provide organization and provide the best distance learning environment for, for our kids um, in consideration to what we've heard from what other uh, schools have done previously when they were first uh, uh, when the first um, shelter in place happened back in in March. Um, with that, uh, it, it's been it's been difficult. Both my wife and I uh, are working full time. Um, we feel fortunate to be able to work it right now, uh, and we're doing the best that we can. Um, and I know that we're speaking for other families out there um, who are in similar situations, working full time, trying to juggle, you know, being a, a teacher at the same time, and, and making sure that our children are are staying engaged and um, trying to give them the best um, experience, you know, given this, given this whole situation. Um, it's, it's been, it's been tough from a parent's perspective. And um, one thing I've done a little bit of research, you know, given, uh, I, I know the, I know the goal is to get the kids back in school. I think we all know that. And um, recently with, with the governor who just came out, uh, a few weeks ago and mentioned that there was a with all the counties that are on the uh, quote unquote watch list it's going to be a little bit more difficult for for the school districts to open up now i know i do know that there is a a waiver um that can be submitted you know despite any county being on the watch list and i'm wondering what the discussion has been uh, amongst you all peers teachers uh, principals you know other representatives of the community and being able to really take a look at the waiver um, and see, you know, wh what has to be done uh, in order to uh, get the kids back in school, you know, sooner than later. Um, like the last participant mentioned, you know, we, we are a community, the schools are an extension of our family and we are willing to help out, you know, as much as, as needed in order to facilitate this. It's difficult as a parent, um, you know, although, children are super resilient and they've showed that, you know, historically, um, this is another situation where, you know, the parent, the, the kids, depending on age, you know, um, do and, and do not know what, what, what's going on. Um, but again, they are an extension and it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough to see in their eyes on a, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, um, that, and they're telling us, you know, we want to be back at school. We want to see our friends. We want to, you know, um, see our teachers. And you know, I've heard from multiple teachers too that it's 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 been, you know, difficult to engage the children, you know, through a, through an iPad. And, and and they would they want the kids back too. Um, now, obviously, I'm not speaking for every every teacher, but um, I, I've had a few conversations where this has been the case. And so, just again, kind of going back to that that waiver. You know what? What has been the discussion um, to to really utilize that waiver um, for any given school to to get the kids back to uh, in physical, you know, in-person instructions instructions sooner uh, than later? And again, you know, we're we're all on board to to help facilitate that as much as we can because we do know that the children do need to be back in school. They need to be in front of the teachers, engaging, you know, with their classmates. Um, there's, there's, you know, multiple studies that, that show that kids, um, it's detrimental to their, um, you know, to their, uh, growth, um, if they're not, if they're not in the classroom. And so, um, again, I just want to say, I appreciate, you know, this time to speak and, uh, whenever necessary, uh, I'd like to help facilitate and be, you know, a part of this process if possible. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. And our last um, public comment is from Jennifer Soper about the union, I believe. Could somebody let her unmute her? She's unmuted. Jennifer, you're unmuted, I think. Hello? Jennifer, are you there? 
I see a box with her, with your name on it. You're unmuted. Really like to hear from you. My guess is that her mic may not be working. I've seen that happen a couple of times. Okay. Should we give her, I'd like to give her a minute or so to, I'd love to hear what she has to say. Gary, if you're talking to us, you're muted currently. Close hers and then open it one time and see if that does anything. Will do. I'm gonna um, mute you and then unmute you, Jennifer. Gary, did you see what Jason said? He said if she logs out and logs back in, that that worked yesterday. So she may have to log all the way back out and log all the way back in. It looks like she just did that. So perhaps we'll get her back in a minute. I hope so. Following um, Jennifer, then we'll move into uh, 7.1, which is the NL initial length determination um, for distance learning. That will be our next step. Should we move on and then come back to her? I think we'll know here in about 30 seconds. Okay. Hello. Hi. Oh, okay. Hello. You can hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. Sorry. Um, I just want to thank you all for your time for doing all these uh, meetings. And I have to say last night, meeting with Jason and Cliff was very informative, but I am curious as to um, with the teachers union, are they going to be able to override any decisions that the board has when you guys try to implement a process of getting these students back into the classrooms? Has there been any communication with the board and the union? And is, are you guys in any type of an agreement um, I'm very concerned that the union is going to possibly delay these students getting back into the classrooms. And as the past two speakers have already voiced, um, we, I truly feel that it's in the best interest to get these students back into the classroom as soon as they can. Education is essential. These teachers are essential workers. And I feel that if the district, with the help of parents and whatever the community that we can help you get these students back into the classroom if the families feel comfortable and the teachers feel comfortable being in the classrooms they should be allowed to of course those teachers who are not comfortable that is their right and they can continue to teach the families who don't want their kids back in a hybrid model from the distance but i just feel that the more time that we keep these kids out of the classroom it's extremely detrimental they've had um, two weeks off for the past couple of years with the fires and then an extended spring break and i can just see um with my kids and their friends they're you know they don't care anymore they just they feel like you know this last 10 weeks of the spring semester it was why should we get up we don't have any there was no the teachers weren't um making these students accountable for the most part um i can honestly say for my daughter who was a sophomore last year she had two teachers that went above and beyond but the teachers at the junior high it was it was obsolete so i that's i just wanted to share those feelings thank you jennifer mm -hmm. okay um, we are at the action item, and I'm going to turn it over to Shelton. Uh, well, just to bad as a background, the, the board asked for us to put back on as an action item. That's why we're meeting today, um, to consider and potentially act on um, setting a date 
a sunset essentially date for the first phase of distance learning independent study. And I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it would, part of the rationale was enabling families and staff to plan accordingly. Um, and so um, we have placed that on for your discussion. Great. And so I want to put this into a larger uh, context of what's you know, the discussions we've been having in the last uh, several weeks, uh, and then introduce a proposal um, uh, that gives us some guidance on how business learning can go forward here. And so, uh, you know, as Gary mentioned, we've had in you know, the last two weeks, uh, six hours of testimony uh, with really broad engagement that uh, I think I speak on behalf of the board, we're very thankful for. Uh, we had over 350 people at our last meeting, over 250 at the first. I see today we have over 100 people uh, who are concerned. Uh, that's what we need. We need uh, your commitment, your engagement. So we thank you for that input. Uh, one thing that became really clear out of, of all this testimony is there is no solution that's going to make everyone uh, completely happy. There, there isn't something that every, that everyone gets all that they want. If there, if there were, we would have identified that pretty quickly. We'd be on that path. Any solution here that helps us get through the pandemic uh, is going to require compromise. And, and this is what we're trying to express uh, in this um, uh, resolution that I want to propose um, to uh, to give us a framework for this compromise what we tried to identify and, and surmise from all this testimony uh, is uh, identifying the constraints that we have uh, as a, a district as well as opportunities that we can capitalize on to uh, to continue our education during this time but most importantly we wanted to distill the values that we uphold uh, that we heard from all this um, testimony. Uh, and so um, I want to read uh, the proposal for you. Gary, if you can share screen and put it up, I can read it into the record. And, and this will be the starting point for the board really to discuss um, you know, if this is the, the direction we want to set for the district. Um, and I want to say up front, the proposal, the plan doesn't work without cooperation of all the stakeholders involved. And I really appreciate even our three speakers today, uh, or four, who said, uh, I'm willing to help. That is the kind of um, uh, willingness that we need for this to work. So we broke down uh, this proposal into two separate resolutions, one for schools that go K-6 and K-8, and the other uh, for the um, uh, 7 through 12 uh, schools uh, because their situations are, are different. Um, the, the action that we're proposing are similar between them, but we just wanted to separate the two uh, resolutions. So let me read uh, this first one, a resolution on grades K-6 uh, and K-8 on learning modalities for fall 2020 during the COVID-19 pandemic. So it says, whereas Sonoma County is currently on the state's watch list for COVID-19 cases and schools in the county are required by the state to open the 2020-2021 academic year in distance learning modalities. And whereas Petaluma City Schools may transition to in-person instruction during the pandemic, only after Sonoma County is off the state watch list for at least 14 consecutive days, but even then in-person instruction would require physical and behavioral adjustments at schools including maintaining spacing between all individuals, wearing masks, cohorting students, frequent cleaning of shared spaces and materials, and responsive virus testing and contact tracing. And whereas some students are significantly disadvantaged by distance learning from home, including some who do not have adult supervision during the day, lack adequate space or privacy, lack adequate internet connectivity, bandwidth or speed, are English language learners or require learning accommodations specified in IEPs and 504s. And whereas the need to reevaluate the effectiveness of distance learning during a pandemic can be partially mitigated by differentiated support for students and families who are most disadvantaged by distance learning. And whereas distance learning impacts all students' social development by limiting extracurricular activities traditionally offered by schools. And, and this I want to emphasize, 
whereas PCS community upholds the values of safety, equity, consistency, and flexibility as it navigates through the pandemic. Now, therefore, be it resolved that PCS commits to distance learning modality through the 12th week of the fall 2020 traditional calendar, and PCS will reassess the pandemic situation in the ninth week of the fall 2020 traditional calendar to plan accordingly for the 13th week and thereafter. And be it further resolved that PCS will strive to accommodate students and families who are significantly disadvantaged by distance learning at home by coordinating safe and supervised spaces on campuses for cohorted students in distance learning. And be it further resolved that PCS will monitor their students' distance learning throughout the fall semester and make necessary adjustments to maximize effectiveness and equity. And be it further resolved that PCS will investigate social programming options for students in the fall semester and will support those that can be implemented safely and be it further resolved that PCS calls on all our students, families, and staff to generously support each other as a community committed to the education of all our children. And the second resolution, uh, which uh, is uh, specific to the secondary schools, is uh, essentially identical with the exception of an addition additional whereas clause recognizing the specific uh, constraints, ad additional constraints that secondary schools have in scheduling. And that additional clause says, whereas in-person instruction during the pandemic presents unique challenges to secondary schools because students' individual schedules confound efforts to cohort students in sanitized spaces and materials. So we're essentially looking for the same course of action for um, the secondary schools. And I, uh, a part of what uh, motivates this, and we heard from several folks during the testimonies over the last couple of weeks, uh, people saying, uh, we recognize this is uh, a crisis, uh, this pandemic, and the way through it is as a community. And I, I really appreciated those comments and uh, the, these resolutions are meant to reflect that need for um, a community action um, uh, through this pandemic. So we open it up for discussion among the board. Thank you, Sheldon. Um, comments? Well, I mean, I feel like Sheldon stole all the words that I wanted to say. Am I? Oh, sorry. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I was not on the English channel. Um, I was saying that Sheldon stole all of the good verbiage and all of the things that I was thinking of saying. Um, but even if there was, yeah, there's no solution that everybody's gonna like, and there's also no solution that's going to work for everybody. Every single family is different. Every single student is different. Um, and so as much as we can, we are gonna work with the individual students and families but as a board that oversees 8,000 plus students and so many staff members, you know, we really can't put the nitty gritty into a board resolution. So I just wanted to add that just because you don't see something explicitly outlined here doesn't mean that we aren't thinking about it or aren't considering it. But that being said, if there is something in here or something that's not in here, please feel free to email us. You know, we can have as many listening sessions as we want, but 365 days a year, you're welcome to email us, send us a letter in the mail, um, or call us. All of our phone numbers are on the website. So um, I just want to say thank you to Sheldon and Ellen for putting this together. And, you know, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like that our kids can't learn in the classroom. But I also very, very much could not live with myself if a single employee or student dies. I, I, I can't. Thank you, Caitlin. I just had a question about the time frame. So it's a 12th week. So that's all the way to November 4th. I mean, so then um, possibly back just for the last six weeks is what it sounds like. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, there's, uh, my understanding is there's three grading periods, right, in the semester. And so that was what we were, we were looking for, some kind of increment that um, abides by that, those grading so, periods. 
Okay, sorry, cut you off. Um, so November 4th, is that when the last grading period starts? Yes. Oh, okay, so that's why that date was chosen. Um, and then I just had a question about up underneath it. It says uh, the part about accommodating students and families who are disadvantaged. Um, would the goal be to bring back those families first, to bring them back earlier? Is that what this is referring to? Or is this everyone back on the 12th, possibly? Well, I think it, it has to do with, like, as far as evaluating, that would be to bring everyone back um, or a hybrid if we can. Um, right. But, but um, accommodating students and families who are significantly disadvantaged is going to require a, um, to develop a schedule and, and timing and how can we bring those students back or have them back right away if, if possible in, in tiny cohorts. Sheldon, did I say that right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an acknowledgement, uh, you know, that we know that uh, not all students uh, can engage in distance learning um, equally. Uh, and, and so we want to provide support to those families who are most disadvantaged through distance learning. They are still technically distance learning, but they're doing it at yeah. school and I with adult support. Yeah, I had a question, Ellen, when you said, um, coming back to instruction, and then you said, and 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 maybe hybrid. Are 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 we talking about bringing in this resolution, bringing kids back, not in a hybrid, but just everybody there? No, I that, think that comes with the evaluation at nine weeks. That's right. That we don't. There's nothing in. So there's here. a possibility that we would bring back kids all together without being skipping hybrid altogether. Yeah. I mean, technically, I mean, yes, if there's a vaccine that's invented tomorrow and every, but like, I'm not saying it's likely at all, right. but theoretically it could be, we don't know. Nine weeks is a long time. I mean, New York city, uh, or not New York city, New York state today, uh, the governor, you know, essentially gave the green light for districts to decide for themselves and because their case, uh, of COVID is significantly low. We could hope for that. So I had, um, I want to make sure that Joanna, you were done and Ellen. Yeah. Um, I, ha um, so I'm going to take the position that um, I see some real problems with the timeline. Okay. Um, so uh, as Joanna, and first of all, thank you for doing this. <laughs> this, is, this is not easy, you did a great job. I only, my only real um, comment is about the timeline. So I wanna paint a picture of the timeline. Yeah, no, this is, you know, this is for discussion. Yeah, yes. So I'm gonna take these out because it makes me crazy. Um, so first of all, um, I, I'm kind of, so I have like four things that I wanted to kind of bring up. Um, so could I just go through them and then discuss them or go through each one individually? Why don't you just bring them all up and then we'll talk as... Okay. Um, the, the, it's, it's, to me, when I was first reading, this is all around when. So the resolved that PCS commits to distance learning modality through the 12th week of the fall 2020 traditional semester and PCS will reassess the pandemic situation in the ninth week of the fall 2020 traditional semester to plan accordingly for the 13th week and thereafter and be it further resolved. So to me, that sounds super complicated. And I was trying to figure out um, why the nine weeks for reevaluation of thinking about coming back to in-person instruction five weeks later, um, with the assumption that at nine weeks, nothing will change. In those well, weeks. I, I think that's a pretty big assumption. And because well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I think, about, well, think about what has changed in the last nine weeks in terms of right, our understanding yeah, of this disease. It's like every day there's huge changes. So, so nine, I, guess, I guess that gives time, 
but I think we'll be planning for in-person instruction, no matter hybrid, in-person, whatever you want to call it, during that all that time anyway. So I guess one issue was the nine weeks. It also, I wanted to kind of paint a picture of, of the time frame. So at nine weeks, you are at the end of September. And um, so then four weeks later, you're at the beginning of November. So throughout October, so we reevaluate the beginning of September. And, and, and then we um, to decide whether we're going to get through our two grading periods, begin the second grading period with in-person instruction based on what we're reevaluating at the ninth week. And so it just seems like October we have fire season, we have PG&E shutoffs, we have the onset of flu season. And it seems like there's so many variables in there. It just, I, I, I worry that whatever's decided or we're, we're using for evaluation is, is not going to be uh, actually be able to use it in November. Okay. Yeah, but the biggest thing I think for me is the time frame is that the grading periods. So you go and tell, so your end of your grading period is the end of October. You begin your first week in November for the end of the year. You're in your third grading period. So all third grading period is basically um, finishing up projects. Um, uh, it's like the culminating projects. It's uh, assessment. It's parent uh, teacher in, in elementary parent teacher um, conferences. You also have in the month of November, you have a Veterans Day holiday, and then you have the week of Thanksgiving. So it's completely broken up. And then you have two weeks in December, and you have finals. So my problem is that to, to take distance learning for those two grading periods, and then all of a sudden, in the last grading period um, bring in a completely different modality. You're going to have, you know, in-class instruction, and then you're going to have distance learning. You're going to have, you know, teachers that have been teaching in a very, you know, in a distance learning mo mode, all of a sudden have to divide up their kids into two different um, cohorts. Um, and I just, uh, to me, it's already going to be broken up. It'll be so disruptive. It will be, um, there's so many variables uh, to the in-person. Where are we going to get the substitutes? How do we accommodate those teachers that uh, don't feel comfortable being in class? How do we match them up? Are they going to be able to match up? Are we going to have any kids that don't want to be in, in person? what happens to that class that that teacher has created over those two months, two and a half months, what happens, what happens to that continuity? What happens to that teacher? Is she going to be able to, she won't be able to, he, he or she, won't be able to teach the in-person part. So do you see where I'm getting? what I'm getting at with here. Yeah, and that and that's and I mean, so it just it becomes so complicated. So so many things are going on. Uh, the kids won't be able to work in groups. They're gonna be six feet apart at all times. They won't be able to have relationships, close relationships with the teacher. Um, they won't have recess. Um, so there's there's also still gonna be distance learning. So we're still Maddie, Maddie, Maddie. Yeah. Maddie. Can I just stop just for a second, just for some clarification? Yes. Um, I guess from you or from whoever, um, just about what you're asking about. I mean, so because we we did also hear from parents who, um, you know, and we did refer to kids who were higher need or more at risk or more disadvantaged, yeah. significantly disadvantaged. Um, and I understand they won't be able to have as much social interaction but um, 
I guess this kind of leaves it open to bring them back a little bit sooner. Well, what I was, what I understood for um, in the resolution was that we would be bringing them back and that we'd be reevaluating to see whether we can bring them back in small cohorts. Um, yeah, and I understand so, like. So with the evaluation, so if we evaluate it nine weeks, then mm -hmm. with that evaluation, then see about having these cohorts coming back. Because I, I totally agree that they need to be in school. But I just see that the, the, the time frame for the semester doesn't accommodate for that, given the fact that we're starting and wait at, on the watch list and it doesn't look like we're getting off of it anytime soon. Um, right. But I can see that using that, that evaluation and if we're off the watch list and everything looks like, like it's in place that we can have those four hearts be in person if it's necessary. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yeah, if you know, bring everybody back. If Mary, bring all Mary, elementary Mary. schools and all secondary, I think I don't see the benefit. Is what I'm wondering. Well, I mean, it opens up a couple other questions as well. Like, wh how are we going to evaluate? And then when we do evaluate, are we going to prioritize certain groups of students? If so, how does that, you know, how do we handle their scheduling, their, you know, all of that? That's those those are great questions. I think my whole deal is I don't want to say DL for the rest of the semester right now. I'm just not ready to say that. And and so I, I really feel like there needs to be a trigger at nine weeks. We could look at it at every six weeks if we want, but I just don't want to say vote and say distance learning for the rest of the semester and then we see things change. And so we've made this commitment and then we're stuck. So I think that's why there's those triggers of reevaluation. Joanna, the questions you bring up about evaluating are excellent. And I'm not really sure what the answers are to that. We would have to come up with criteria and so I just want to also speak to some of the, the complexity you referred to, Maddie. So at nine weeks, if we make our, do our job quickly, teachers will have up to three weeks to pivot uh, if that decision is to move into either some kind of hybrid or you know, hopefully full on face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, but if not, then you know, we, we continue distance learning. But part of what I want to know at that reassessment pit time is, are we serving those students who are most marginalized right. through distance learning? Because right. if we're not, and we're committed through the end of the semester, yeah. uh, you know. I agree I, completely with that. Completely. It keeps me up at night. Definitely. It's like you. Um, I, I just, um, and, and I think that that's, those, those are the things that we definitely have to continually look at all the time. And I think we need to think of how we serve their needs before it's, it's safe to bring them onto campus, as you mentioned in the resolution. Mm -hmm. You know, like, how are we gonna serve their needs now? Um, and if we, we come up with some solution in the next two, two and a half months, then to change all that when we go to in-person, mm -hmm. You see, I mean, I'm, I'm really struggling with the time frame of this. I'm not struggling with reevaluation. I'm not struggling with trying to meet the needs of these vulnerable populations. Um, I'm, I'm struggling with how, uh, with consistency, with stability, uh, with coherent, uh, um, a teacher's coherent curriculum. Because you're going from one thing, one modality, into something that's absolutely different. And, I'm, and the benefit to me is that, you know, the kids get to be in school, but at what, I don't, at what cost for how long, um, it's, it, it may create a lot of harm. Um, I just don't see the added benefit um, if we are serving the needs of those students. I don't. I don't really. 
I guess I'm not separating the needs of those students um, that distance learning doesn't work for. I'm not separating that from distance learning because I'm hoping that with distance learning, we'll be able to create something for them. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, that's what the resolution calls for, that's what it calls differentiated for. support. Yeah, and uh, I totally but, agree with but, that. But we, yeah, but we don't know, we don't have, we don't know yet how well that's going to work. We're, you know, we're going to, uh, the aim is to set up something that does a good job, but uh, we want to know. So, Maddie, um, are you saying, are you looking, I'm just trying to figure out, so I understand all your concerns, they're mine as well. Um, but are you saying that you want to make the commitment for a full semester of distance learning and reevaluate every six weeks, maybe? Every Absolutely. Period? Absolutely, and then have, have this semester to really create a plan that will that will deal with substitutes. That will deal with you know finances. We don't even know how much money we're going to get, um, and and hopefully have a much clearer picture. The teachers can uh, work, and the staff can work on uh, what. It, I mean, our as far as I know, the secondary doesn't even have a clear hybrid schedule yet, um, because of the co because of the problem of small learning communities, and so. You know, and you know, I, I'm sure all of you saw that picture of um, you know the high school kids in Georgia rammed into a hallway going in between classes. Um, uh, so, what what I I guess what am I saying? To use this time to really plan for something that maybe in January we'll be able to go to in person. I I have no attachment to hybrid um you know in person is is what is is really going to be um important whether it's hybrid or full-on um but i think that if you, you just looking at grading periods just look at the way that a semester kind of as a teacher uh, uh flows and is organized and you have that first semester you can count on this is how it's going to function the, you know, everything's set in place in two, and, two months, two and a half months, everybody kind of has a sense of how to deal with it. And then in the second semester, you can flip it, right? And you can, you can make it be, you know, more of back, back to more normal in-person instruction. It just feels like that's just, that's just how I'm thinking. But, you know, the, the ability to switch could, you know, uh, for planning purposes for a teacher could be one of the criteria that we're evaluating at week nine. You know, I'm, oh, I am totally in favor of evaluating at week nine. And, and you know. What, what are we evaluating if, if we're committed to the whole semester? How far we are in terms of our planning for in-person instruction. How far are we with our, you know, our masks, our shields, our, um, you know, everything that needs to be in place? Do we have the money? Do we have a substitute list? Do we have teachers that have definitely said they're not gonna come back for, dis you know, for in-person instruction until there's a vaccine? Um, and then how do we make that transition between distance learning to in-person instruction, which is a totally different schedule. Do parents I'm, have to pick I'm up, here. They have to pick up their kids at 11 and, you know, or deliver them at 1.30. You know, there's... I, I'm hearing you, Maddie. Uh, I know you. For me, for me, this is a compromise. This is a compromise between, uh, you know, teachers need to plan uh, and parents needs to have their kids uh, in school. Uh, and uh, I'm both, uh, and this is a compromise that doesn't sit perfectly well with me, yeah. uh, but, it, but it's a compromise. I understand completely. I just needed to bring up those parts that I felt made it difficult for me to approve that timeline. Everything else is fabulous. I mean, wow.
Um, my issue is we've heard, I mean, we heard from, we've heard so much from parents, um, including today. We only had three people speak. It was three parents wanting. We've also heard from a lot of parents that said that they don't want, they want a semester. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I, I think, I don't know. I just don't feel that committing to a full semester without any caveats, if things change, would be a mistake. That's just well, my opinion. That's what Caitlin said in the beginning. I mean, we've heard from parents who want full semester to parents who want to go back right away or at some midpoint semester. We've heard from teachers who want us to call the whole semester and some who want to go back for special ed. We've heard from a lot of special ed parents, teachers. There is no one thing that is going to make everyone happy. It's even going to make us happy. I'm like, no, I agree. Call the whole semester, but I'm like, but I don't want to do the whole semester. I want to do like, so I'm torn as well. Um, my, I mean, my grandkids want to go back. I mean, yeah. the part of it is like, yeah, I hear you, Ellen. My kids are like, they don't like Zoom either at all. They're not looking forward to going back to school, you know? So I have to deal that in my own home with my four kids. But I mean, the fact is we cannot go back right now. So, as we spoke previously, we cannot get a waiver. We can't have just certain kids back right now. We're not going to make every teacher be in their classroom right now. Um, so for now, we're going to start distance. And again, where it sounds like we're all torn about how long we do it. I just, I think I'm, feel like I'm talking in circles now, but I. Joanna, go back to what you said. We can't get a waiver. I don't, would you clarify that for me? We spoke about that previously, right? That we're not going to be applying for waivers for the small schools. For, for in-person, the in-person waiver. Are they even available while we're on the watch list? The, you know, the guidance well, the only came out it. this week about how to, uh, um, you know, abide, how to apply for it. And it, you know, it takes a, it's a process. And um, I think, are there any like, you can only apply for this at a certain time or these need to be the parameters or you need to be off the watch. I mean, are there I'm any sure there are a million parameters if it's, a waiver from yeah. the state government. Yeah. Like, it's more for like smaller schools, like actually small K-6. Like Wilson or um, other. Like, no, yeah. it, it, we, we have not, we, we are currently not anticipating applying for a waiver. Um, that is a waiver from the governor's order. Um, doesn't mean that that can't happen and da down the road, but um, we also are anticipating that a number of our smaller elementary dis elementary only districts have put in their names in Sonoma County for waivers. Um, anticipate that they will probably, um, whether they receive a waiver or they wait until the governor um, uh, changes course, that they'll do some kind of um, or of opening on their level, a, a smattering of groups. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure that we wanted to be um, leading that charge. And um, we're more interested to see how that played out at the elementary level. The most, of the, most of the- Most of the- Or school by school? Well, these are school districts of, of two elementary schools, of three elementary schools. So, so yeah. If we were to apply for a waiver, it would be for the whole district. Uh, it can, no, it could be a variety of different, there's a variety of different ways to do that. Yeah, I just want to say again, I think this is as close to a compromise as we can identify. I think this gives us a lot of flexibility while still in every way, 12 weeks is a long time. And Maddie, I hear you that the last six weeks is chaos in the educational world. And I, I mean, at my job, we're going month by month to figure out if we're gonna be allowed to go into the office or not. And that's not, it's not ideal, it's not great. So I think 12 weeks is three months and deciding at nine weeks and having a little window 
um, to, you know, have more of these listening sessions and talk to more folks. And like Sheldon was saying, it might be that it isn't good working or we'll be able to see what has worked and hasn't worked. And if we just commit to a whole semester, we might not be able to pivot the little things that need to be pivoted. Um, and then I had something else, but I forgot. I'll chime back. I, I like what you said, Caitlin, about, can, I mean, just because we say, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to reevaluate in on the ninth week, which is October something, like October 14th or something. Um, I do think we should continue to reevaluate and possibly hold more special sessions and mm -hmm. meetings just to be like, are your kids' IEPs and 504 accommodations being met? How are our ELL students doing? How are our other at-risk populations doing? I don't, I don't want anyone to think that because we do this that we are not considering those students, but also teachers, how is it going? Um, right. How do you feel now about possibly going back or hybrid or the counselors asking them as well? Um, yeah, it's not just, I, yeah, I, I agree, Sheldon and Caitlin, it does give us more, um, I guess, wiggle room. Yeah, and then the other thing I wanted to say more for the audience than for the five of us and admin is, I, you know, I don't think what happened the spring semester, I don't think it's fair to call it distance learning. I think it was crisis learning. I think it was a whole mess and a lot of teachers adapted and thrived and went above and beyond as we've heard. Um, and then other teachers hadn't, I mean, it's not anybody's fault. We all kind of didn't see this coming because of our federal government. Um, so, I, I just really want to stress that I, I really think teachers and all of those different staff are really committed to making it actually be distance learning, not just sitting on a Zoom call um, and having the kids rename themselves, reconnecting so that they can mute and turn off their video and go leave. Um, the kids are real smart, y'all. So <laughs> that's, I, you know, I just, I think that if we do end up doing distance learning for the whole semester, it's only going to get better as the semester goes on. But I want the flexibility of being able to turn when we need to turn. I guess, um, go ahead. would it be, you know, we're kind of focusing on when we're going to look at nine weeks. Would it be better if we looked at six weeks? Yeah. And, and so gave us nine weeks. The nine weeks is in between grading periods. I mean, I think we need to look at it even before that, you know, just to see, check in with everybody. So six weeks? And I do think that some, some of this has to be done way before the grading period, you know. There, there, in the resolve, there is, a, there is a clause about, you know, we are going to be continuously yeah. uh, monitoring. Yeah, that's what I thought. The ninth week was really a marker for us, the board, to make a decision of what's going to happen on the 13th week. Right, because what we've been hearing from everybody is that, holy poop, school starts in a week, you haven't made a decision yet. So this... Yes. yes. Yeah. So would it work if we will reassess the pandemic situation in the sixth week of the fall semester? The resolution says that we commit to 12 weeks. So... Well, I mean, we're going to be reassessing every single day. The thing that we could possibly come back we could possibly come back before that. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I. I mean, that's what we need. If we're going to as is, I think we're obviously going to be looking at this every single day. Teachers are going to be telling us what they think. Parents are hopefully going to be telling us what they think. Students are going to be weighing in. It's not like we're suddenly going to start studying for the eleventh and twelfth week and. Like the ninth week, we're gonna have so much more knowledge about everything, what's working, what's not, and hopefully more information about this insane virus. Um, but I really think that that three week buffer is for the community's benefit and the teacher's benefit. Um, and so that's what it is. It's not saying that we're not gonna check in before that. I mean, I think that's every right. single day we're gonna be checking. I understand is we need to make a decision. If you felt like you needed to do, to have a little bit more flexibility, then you would probably include, just put by, by the, yeah. by the ninth week. So it could, it could happen earlier. And I just, I just want to- change the language to by the ninth week rather than at the ninth week. 
Okay, I make a motion to amend the resolution to replace the in the ninth wink uh, with um, by by the ninth week. Well, you haven't done a. There hasn't been a. No, we haven't even moved. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. no, that's okay. <laughs> We're doing Caitlin's rules, not Robert's rules. <laughs> no, I only I um I, I only want to stress that let's say um so uh, that. On, so we're, we're committed to 12 weeks of distance learning. If we and, adopt it. Uh, and then possibly if everything looks really good, then on the 13th week, we go to some kind of in-person instruction. We and could, we don't point, have to. My point is just, this is what it's going to look like because it's at the end of the semester. It's at the end of having two and a half months of a particular type of modality, and then all of a sudden, boom, and it's completely different. And everybody's going right. to have to change the schedule. We have to take that into account at that time. We're not going to magically forget about that. You know what I mean? Like, no, I'm or just saying that the reality it, you can plan for it all you want, but the reality of it is going to be disruptive. Well, uh, that's what I'm saying yeah. is if we it decide is. that it's going to be disruptive. It's going to be disruptive. Right? That's it's true. Going be, yeah. It's going to be harmful. I right. Think. We can talk about it then and see what the, the costs and benefits are when we know more about what's going on. But that's the thing is that they need more time than that. That's why I want the semester is so that they have that. Okay, that's done. You know, we know that this is done for the semester. And even at the end of the semester, when I'm thinking about grades, when I'm thinking about culminating projects, when teachers are having their, um, elementary school teachers are having their parent-teacher conferences, these are all, and then you have it all broken up because you have Thanksgiving, you have a holiday, you have finals. I, I just see that, I, I just, that I just wanted to bring up that, this is what it's gonna look like. It's gonna be a huge shift. It's not an easy thing to do. If we not go that in your curriculum that you've been teaching for two and a half months right. and apply it. Right, right but you're yeah, just... we're for sure gonna switch, vote to switch to non-distance learning and that's not what this is. Right, I'm just saying that for me personally. Right. You want to take that decision see, off the board. I, I don't see the value of going of switching out of distance learning on the the, thir the um, 13th week. Yeah, I, we, I do. we, we, we might make that decision. decision. Yeah, I mean, make. I'm just saying that this is just what this is just what I've been thinking about. Well, so what about if we commit to nine weeks and evaluate at the grading period that ends after six weeks, and that gives us three weeks? My thing is, and, and I, would, that, I would be fine with that. I just think we won't know much about yeah. the pandemic in six weeks like we will in nine weeks. Well, and switching halfway through a grading period is probably and, even worse. And, and frankly, uh, you know, I think a lot of teachers will, will be finding their groove in, in distance learning right. you know, after six weeks. Um, hey, I, I was wondering, just to shift gears a little bit, uh, Gary, I'm wondering if you uh, would be willing to speak a little bit to how the accommodations for the fans who are, you know, most significantly disadvantaged by distance learning, or is it too premature to, to, to talk about that, how that might no, look? No, I think that, that um, you know, our, our initial concern right now primarily is, um, what's gonna happen at the elementary level, knowing the developmental uh, needs of kids and how challenging it's going to be to do distance learning. We've got a group of teachers that have done an amazing job of setting up a, a program. Um, and we think that they're gonna be successful with a large portion of our kids. They will have some students where they're gonna need some support. And so um, they're, there are, there are limitations, obviously, to being in this platform that we're on right now. Um, you know, we, we would look at ways for, in those types of situations where the teacher would continue to be working in a distance environment, but uh, those particular students might come in 
and with some aid support um, be able to um, access what the teacher is doing via distance um, in a safe cohorted environment, very similar to the, the restrictions, even more restrictions than what are on our, that, that, than what is on our child care model. Um, and receive some of their distance learning and plus supplemental support at the school site. And so there, was a, there would be a lot of work that would, that would need to be fleshed out on that. Uh, but it doesn't change what the distance learning teacher is doing on their platform. It changes the location the student is receiving services. And this is not every student. We don't have the ability to do that. It would be students that are struggling in distance learning, students that by the very nature of their unique needs are gonna need additional support. So there'd be a lot of work that we would need to put into it, but it is a whole, all hands on deck approach, um, just like we have committed to as a district with, with everyone has, has jumped in to pitch in on this. And um, it would be primarily focused initially on, um, as we developed it out, we would focus first probably K-1-2 and develop out from there. So we would start to make sure that we had a model that worked um, and, then, and then grow it from there. Because it's possible that, you know, I, you know, as I was communicating back in April, the likelihood of today happening has come, that I thought that we were gonna be in distance learning, a real possibility um, given the metrics. If, if this goes on for any length of time, um, the gap for these, these particular students is going to grow greater and greater and greater. And this is also about supporting the teacher because they're gonna be doing their very, very best, yet they're not going to be able to, to physically assist. You know, they don't have that tool uh, you know, of proximity that at their disposal so it would be working with with you know with our association and federation which we've do, been really working quite well on and and doing some pretty great things so i'm confident that we could come up with something that would support the student and support the distance learning instructor which is a a a subset obviously of a bigger conversation about what you're talking about right now so Am I am I correct that that would be that would happen no matter if we committed to twelve weeks or a semester? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because it, it it is it is you know we are having you know there are a, all stakeholders have shared their real concerns about the developmental issues related to our youngest population and this modality, no matter how robust it is. And there's some great things that are happening. Yeah. And, right and to be clear, Maddie, uh, it would be the direction that we would be prescribing in this resolution. That's what I, that's it's what not gonna I, happen by itself, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, that's what I interpreted the resolution to say. Yeah. Yes, because those little partners and first graders and I think your issues are, are 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 quite a bit different, quite a bit more complicated when you start moving into the comprehensive seventh grade and beyond. Yeah. It, it gets very, very challenging. And not that it's not gonna be there's there aren't challenges at elementary, but it's 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 tenfold. And again, I mean, other than um, going full semester, I mean, we did, I just keep going back to, we heard a lot about um, our at-risk students, you know, being equitable. What do we do if, if the distance learning doesn't work for certain students? And again, I'm just so torn, because I do see the benefit of full semester distance learning, but also we do not want to forget about all those parents and teachers who spoke about what if, like, what if this isn't working and we do want to leave some room 
for oh, that. Isn't that kind of what we were just talking about, Sheldon, that you had put in there that we do, that that is a priority for us. Yeah. That those, that, that that served no matter what the duration we decide on, right? Well, I mean, the duration, it's the same resolution. So, uh, you know, we could separate yeah. out the decisions, but I'd rather try to just knock this out today if we can. Um, I, we have to vote today. We have to make that decision. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, so I'm just a clarifying question. So if we did say full semester, then we would still be able to reevaluate bringing those kids back. I didn't, I don't see how that, am I understanding that right? I don't, I think Can you repeat be... that? You broke up. They would be back in there in these cohorts that Gary was just mentioning. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Even if Joanne is saying if we commit to a whole semester, what, I mean, not what is the point, but reevaluating won't determine whether the kids come back into the classroom or not. Yeah. The reevaluation would be on is it working? Yeah, right? you would be, you would just be doing a progress check and determining what your next steps, what you think the next steps are. I mean, I don't think we got very far at the last board um, session about the metrics that we would use to, re, to reopen and hybrid. I was hoping, and I think we may unfortunately get more information as other people open up. Yeah. Um, so I think that there's a number of metrics. This isn't, this isn't, this is a, this is a journey down a road that nobody's been down. And and um, I think we're going to find out a lot more information. Um, it could be it, it it could be um, good for us, where we're where we're you know saying wow you know thank goodness that we we waited you know um, we could find out that it you know may, maybe that maybe some of our concerns you know um, don't come to fruition. But I really think it's really it's it's apple and apples and oranges when you're looking at secondary elementary. You know, the people that are going to be looking at opening up earlier are going to be elementary um, districts or elementary sites in a K-12 district. It's not going to be secondary, right. typically, not at least in Sonoma County. And so we'll have a lot of data on elementary um, as, we move, as we move forward. Um, so I have a clarifying question from what Joanna said, and it's important because it may impact my decision. If we commit to, let's see. So if we commit to either the 12 weeks or the semester, are you saying that we cannot bring any students back to in-person instruction? I thought you said that the cohorts would be on campuses with AIDS and they'd be in person masked, masked with with distance, um, you know, appropriate six feet, and the teacher would be on distance learning. Am I? So, so the, you use the term instruction, and the instruction in the in what I was talking about, the instruction was still taking place from the teacher via distance learning. Right, but where there are the kids? Would be eight, there would with the students remotely. However. In, in that model, those students would be at the school site receiving backup support from an adult as they're going through. And so that's what I, that's, that's what we were talking about as far as how could you provide support in a distance learning model? All I'm, all I was talking about is if you, if you set the parameters for us and say we're in distance learning, I'm immediately thinking about how do we protect our most at risk? And in that model, we would re have to repurpose people that are not providing direct support for those students so that they are providing some direct support. And then again, it's not, it, it, it's not necessarily, you, there's only a limited amount of folks that we can actually serve in that way. But, um, and, 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 but I, would, I will say that probably 85 to 90% 90 90 of the parents that we heard from 
in in the um, in the two meetings that were elementary parents probably would have fit in that category. Right. And we would be able to provide them some additional support. So it's possible to be able to bring back kindergartners and you know at, uh, on on that kind of basis. Uh, I guess my worry, Some I, I, I think I've seen the disadvantage of going to the full semester for elementary. If you absolutely can't have, if, if by saying, by saying that we commit to a semester that we can't have any kind of uh, instruction with the teacher or with, with an aide outside, you know, um, I, I don't know whether I'm, I'm really unclear about this. I'm sorry. So, Maddie, it's, it's, if, if you look at the resolve, the resolve is to come up with. I understand, I'm just, we're, I'm just confused as to what happens. I'm confused, I'm confused about what, what, what the instructional piece, I mean, do we want do we want the kinder kindergartners to be back on, or you know, our uh, our vulnerable populations to be back on site, but without the teacher, if we commit to distance learning, right? Yes. Well, because the teachers would be distance so, learning. Because, so, but if we, so the difference here is that if we commit to twelve weeks, and it looks like everything is in place. Or maybe before the 12, so before the 12 weeks, we cannot bring them back with their teacher. I guess that's my, I guess that's my question. Oh, we could, you know, we could change our minds, but, you know, to, but, you know, we want to set some kind of right. reasonable expectation right, right now. I know. For, yeah. But, yeah, we yeah. Can't, you know, it, like was Caitlin was saying, if a vaccine, vaccine comes in, right, if vaccine cures everything tomorrow, we can to just toss this resolution out the window. That'd be nice. Yeah, I'll work on it. So, so maybe another way to say it, Maddie, is um, if you set the distance learning frame, if you set the distance learning um, resolution in place, we worked to, with, with the Federation to determine what distance learning would look like. So that goes, that just kicks in, just like it is right now at Penn Grove and at Cherry Valley. So that and that's that's the model that we're going to continue with until otherwise changed which certainly you have the i mean a resolution is only as, as good as as long as you decide to vote on a different resolution right. but i think the idea is to try to give people try to give people some um clear sailing idea of 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 how long your as you as a board are thinking this is going to go before we even really start doing a, a, a deep dive into this to determine what our next steps are going to be. You know, when and is that trigger going to take place? This is, I mean, this is a resolution, again, for talking about thousands of families, thousands of teachers, thousands of staff, thousands of students. It, like, in, it's intentionally vague. It has to be because of, we can't put every, little situation into a resolution. So it makes sense that we're all a little confused and have questions, but that is really what our staff and admin are for and teachers and everybody to, you know, really make sure that we're doing the best for every single student and family. Um, and because this is written in such a big picture way, it's easy to not think about that. Is it Pangrove Elementary are already doing little cohorts with the YMCA? For some grades. I don't remember if it was all grades. But they have childcare on campus, not all of our... I, no, I understand that. But they, they already have three little cohorts for kids. And so they're already well, we're, that support, right? Well, we're, we are reaching out right now um, and looking for options for how we provide cohort support for child care at all of our elementary school sites. Um, it's a little more complicated because the, 
the cohorted number is one that is basically slashes the class size in half, which doubles the price for that. And so that's a that's a, a work in progress that we're doing with North Bay, with uh, Boys and Girls Club, with y, YMCA, or Y. And so the the um, but it's a cohorted model is different. It is is unique because really truly what it means is that that an adult is with in this case whether that's childcare or whether that's we were providing support while the teacher was doing distance learning they would be with an adult in small groups and they would not mix groups mm -hmm. they would only be those families would be a unique cohort for this much like families are setting up unique families that have the ability, the wherewithal, are setting up unique cohorts outside of the school. That's the difference. You know, that's that's where that's where you get the most um, uneasiness from many teachers, particularly secondary teachers, because it's very it's it's impossible in most models to not to do two cohorts. It's kids are mixing all over the place, which is what you saw. I mean. In, in essence, the, the the most the most egregious form of that in that picture from Georgia. Huh. So passing periods. And haven't they already had to shut down and isolate? Yep. In those places. Probably, probably I, I yeah I haven't been I saw it enough just to shake my head and and, and swipe. Swipe left. We're ready to call the question. We don't have a, we don't have a, uh, so, so one on this, so, yeah. we haven't moved it into, we haven't moved it into, uh, no, we haven't. So procedurally, before you do anything, um, um, let me pull it back up. Can we separate the resolutions? They, they are separated. And what this, what this would be here is this would be, you had the first resolution that you established back in July. So this would be 2021-02. This yeah. would be K6, K8. And this would be 2021-03. Thank you. So the, again, 2021-02 is K6, K8. 2021-03 is grades 712 as a model or we could say probably the better way to say it is 7 8 and 9 through 12. Mm -hmm. those are the configurations yeah because the other one is for the two schools that are k8 got it does that make sense yeah yep. So, um, are we ready to vote or do we want to still chat? Well, we have to move it. I yeah. call to question or move to approve resolution 2021-02. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. So any, any conversation before we vote? I don't, I want to make sure that everybody is, a, is clear. Yeah. I want to make my amendment to change, uh, I move to amend the little clause that says in the ninth week to by the ninth week. Second. It's in the resolve, Gary. The first resolved. Yeah, the second line in the first resolve, change in to buy. There you go, right there. So that, that allows us to well, if, we, if we approve this amendment, we have to vote on it. <laughs> it happens. Yay. Oh, wait, we got to vote on the amendment. You got to vote on the You have to vote. I move on the amendment. Held and second it. We need to vote. Yeah. On, on the Biden by? Yes, on the amendment. The change of language? Yep. Okay, all in favor of the change of language from in the ninth week to by the ninth week? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. 
now we're back to the uh, move to approve. Yeah. So. Okay, do I have a move to approve the? We're already in it. We're, yeah. This is, now it's discussion. Okay, so discussion, anything else or should we just vote? I just, um, I just want to say that in the spirit of compromise, you guys uh, did a very good job. We're trying. I came in here thinking one thing. And? <laughs> I'll wait for the vote. We're going to find out. <laughs> okay, so are we ready to vote? Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor of the resolution 2021-02? Aye. 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 Opposed? Have I heard from everybody? I heard five eyes. Okay. Opposed? Okay. Resolution passed. Let's go on to the next one. Let the record show that the the 2021-03 uh, has already been changed to by the ninth week. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. So we can just go straight to it. Okay. Someone want to move that in? I'll move to approve. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll yeah. second. <laughs> okay. Um, Tell the entire team. We're just. <laughs> oh, okay. So I wanted to amend it. Okay. Then you have to move to amend. Okay. So I move to amend the resolve, the first res the first paragraph of resolve that PCS commits to distant learning modality through the fall semester and eliminate the rest of it. So you can move the thing down. Okay, you need a second. Okay, so you want to... So wanna... I want to say that it resolved that the PC... So this is for secondary. Yes. The PCS commits a distance learning modality through the fall semester. And then leave all the rest of it out. Do I have a second? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, no, through the fall semester and PCS will reassess the pandemic situation by the ninth week of the fall 2020 traditional semester and then leave out to plan accordingly for 13th week. So can you, can you read the whole thing as you want it? Yeah, resolve that PCS commits to distance learning modality through the fall semester and PCS will reassess the pandemic situation by the ninth week of the fall 2020 traditional semester. So you don't want to leave it open that for so the, I want to come believe, the fall. Is there a second? There I mean, hasn't I mean, been a second yet, so we really should second. I'm just pointing, those are, those are the things that would go out. Okay. Yes. All right. I think I, I think I got it. Is there a second? Is there a second? No. Not for me. No. So then the motion. Passed. Motion does not, yeah, motion does yeah. not pass. Can I, Matt, can I ask a question while we're all sitting there sort of quiet? Um, Maddie, so basically what you want to say is that even though we will be reassessing the situation, no matter what we, reass what we discover, high school is going to go through the semester? It's a difference of six weeks. But you, you want it set firmly? Yeah. From secondary through the fall semester. Okay. So junior high and high school through distance learning? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's how the resolution is. Yeah. It's all secondary. Seven through 12. So full semester distance learning with the reassessment by the 12th week or by the ninth week? By the ninth week. So my question is, is that if we reassess at the ninth week, like we're doing with the elementaries and we, we've left it open at the elementaries and we find out that, yeah, we can bring them back. 
we don't have that option for the There's second. completely different schedules, completely different well, no, environments. I'm aware so of that. I would think that in terms of secondary, what that uh, reassessment would do would help the secondary uh, parents and teachers to, uh, that it would basically give us the evaluation to that we are most likely going to go to in-person instruction starting the second semester. So we can use all of that stuff to inform the reopening for in-person instruction, just like we would for the 13th week. It's just that we're not doing it on the 13th week, we're doing it at the semester. It's a matter of five weeks. I just, I think in terms of secondary, um, the, the chaos that would be created um, would be pretty significant. Well, we still have, you know, um, emotional on the table. I, I you know, I, I think those are great. Yeah. Uh, Comment. I mean, I, I, you know, I recognize that. Uh, and I recognize compromise. Can I can I finish? Uh, I mean, I just, I I just wanted. For parents, I feel for all of this. It says it just. I'm just saying, uh, you know, the. I I know that hybrid is 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 almost impossible uh, in the, on the secondary level, but I also heard from teachers, um, Kim Arntz and, and, and others, uh, about looking for ways where uh, some students can come back, uh, particularly on, um, you know, CTE and, and, and other courses. And so uh, I, I want us to, I don't want to tie my hands. Uh, on well, I guess team. that's my, that was my question before. So they can't come mm -hmm. back at all after the reassessment, even at the 12 weeks until after the 12 weeks. Well, that's what you're saying, right? That no matter what. That's what in distance learning is still going to be hands-on classes, just very different. Yeah. Right. So the only time that we would have anything different would be after the 12th week, according yeah. to these, both of these resolutions. That's right. Right, so that if if no. the elective classes came back, they would only be able to be that do that for that last grading period. Yeah. Not on this. It would be, um, be after the 18th week. Oh I well. Just, as someone, what are we talking about? Oh no, no, no! I'm just trying to clarify no. what the what I'm changing. <laughs> what your 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 motion didn't pass. Yeah. <laughs> so we're right now. It stands at, at 12 weeks. And I think Joanna, Joanna is trying to speak. Yeah. Joanna? Oh, I was just saying, I mean, I just, seventh grade, seventh and eighth graders, I just don't want to make that call for them. I, I just, I don't feel comfortable, especially, I mean, some of them are like 11 years old. I don't, yeah, with IEPs going into, I mean, they said all the time when I was at Kenilworth, like the one of the biggest transitions is elementary to junior high school anyway. And then elementary to junior high school distance the whole semester. I just can't commit that. I just can't commit to that. I don't understand all of your positions. Hmm. And you know what, Maddie? I love you and I appreciate <laughs> this discussion. I do because I don't think it's good for us to always agree on everything all the time. And I just love that we're able to do it respectfully. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I don't, I, I take, I, I, you know, I totally uh, am appreciative of this discussion. Yeah. And I did change my mind on one of them, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't usually do. <laughs> so anyway. No, I will not take offense, I assure you. No, I, I know I know that you wouldn't. So just everyone watching, we are still cool. We're still gonna have coffee. We are fine. But yeah, I, I appreciate all of the discussion, even when yeah. we don't. You know, and Maddie, really as a high school teacher, we're here is to have the discussion. Right. You know, Maddie, as a high school teacher like you are, I, I understand that that insanity of the end of this of the end of the semester. Um I just don't want to, I, I just want an out in case something wonderful happens. Um, 
I want to be able to also talk about uh, hybrids as far as um, hands-on classes go. So I guess that's my hes that's why I'm my hesitancy about committing to a full semester. Understood. And sympathetic. <laughs> So are we ready to vote? No, I, you, you have to have a, you have to, to re-amend what? No, her amendment no, didn't pass. So, so if, if I have it correct, I believe it's through the 12th week yeah. of the fall semester. Yeah, you're just missing the of, but otherwise it's good. Where is that? 12th week of the fall 2020 semester. Oh, thank you. <laughs> also be proud of me. Okay. And then, is it the same language by the ninth week? That's what we already changed, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so all those in favor of resolution, Gary, could you bring back to where the name, what number is, so I, yes. my feeble brain can be Sorry. recorded? Okay, <laughs> that's okay. So, all those in favor of resolution 2021-03, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, so it, it passes. Yay. Hey. Wait, wait, so was that an aye or a nay, Maddie? Nay. <laughs> that's what I thought, yeah. yeah. It was I an aye I to no. I know, I was thinking, am I supposed to say I? <laughs> I to the no. Yay. We get you. Yep. Okay. So now we're moving on to discussion information only, implementation of traditional year calendar, next steps, and related issues. So I put this on just kind of as a placeholder. Um, and wanted to find out from the board. I mean, we can talk about some of the some of the issues related to it's really next steps. You know, be you know moving forward with with this resolution um, in in place. But it would be my suggestion would be, would be unless you have some specific questions today that we move this to the next board meeting so that we can really get into it. I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot that's been going on this week. Um, you know, it really has been a united effort from our certificated teachers to our classified staff to administration and our parents to try to, to, to do some heavy lifting. Um, and a lot of work that's obviously being done, you know, related to getting ready for next next um, week. But we, we do want to, at some point, talk about some of the challenges that we have. Um, but we'll I'll, I'll open it up um, if folks have specific things they want to, you know, they want to ask us or talk well, about. I, I guess this would be huge. I want to know. Um, and I'm not sure if this is now or future business, but we passed these resolutions. We talked about, you know, the support for for our ELs, our special eds, and our at risks. And I want to, I want, I want to see a plan, I guess. And so that would be future business, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, I think we want to uh, hear about and you know uh, help out uh, on the planning for those cohorts on campus you know who are getting the marginal the the su support for distance learning on campus and, and how that uh, can look how that can be implemented and to some extent the parameters for either students or families obviously it's not going to be cookie right. cutter and there'll be special exceptions yeah. but you know, do they need the recommendation of two teachers and a counselor? Like what? Yeah. Right. Because it can't be a free for all. I mean, no. it's, uh, we don't have the capacity as Gary no. was saying. Exactly. I wish we did. Well, yeah, but then we wouldn't have this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish we could bring, you know, especially primaries back right. completely, primary grades, but we just don't have the wherewithal to do that. Do we? No. We can bring we can bring those items items back. 
I also want to know how the needs of our special ed students are going to be met. Mm -hmm. Like, how do we handle accommodations? How are IEP plans going to be um, delivered? You know, all, all of that. I'm just, I'm concerned about them since the IEPs, 504s, as yeah. well as discipline issues. Like, how are those going to be handled? I mean, yeah, right because now. we've got junior high and we've got seven through 12 IEPs, we've got seven through 12 ELs, and we certainly have seven through 12 kids at risk. So, how are we gonna? I want to know how we're gonna deal with that. Chris, it might be part of a budget discussion. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all, yeah, all of this is going to be part of a budget discussion. We've never done this before. Is the budget at the next meeting? Oh, boy. We'll bring that back, too. Yeah, we'll be bringing back the 45-day budget revision to disclose the impact of the final state budget on our budget at the next Is meeting. there a final state budget? I don't want to know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Finally? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there, there are chat. There are obviously no teaser, but we'll go ahead and throw it out there. We have some budgetary challenges by the very nature of being held harmless. We'll go into the the particulars. Chris will go through that at the next meeting. But the we are one of the districts that's one of the losers in mm -hmm. that model. And we'll get into the particulars. Other districts are, are growing districts because they don't reap the benefits of having that ADA for, for this year. But we have unique situations in, in our configuration that cause us to, um, you know, some of the dollars that we would ordinarily be redirecting towards students have to pay for this deficit bill that, that the state put upon us when they they did that. So Chris, that we can go into the particulars at the next meeting. Yeah, I, want to, I want to know what the nonprofits that we're partnering with are doing and how much more we can find a way to lean on them because, I mean, this is going to take a whole community, not just the schools. I know that uh, MentorMe is, is working on, on some, you know, it, it hasn't been firmed up. But, you know, they are trying to figure out a way of, of uh, Right, I know they all are, so I want to know what they are doing. Yeah, and I, just for you to know, D Gary's absolutely right. It's um, the hold harmless is kind of a misnomer. So mm -hmm. just for you to know. We also are having our, um, just not that you don't want to see us more than you already have in the last week and a half. We have our Zoom training starting with Circle Up next week. Mm -hmm. That is coming and it, nothing is going to stop us this time. <laughs> and it kick off it kick off some really important work that that um, maybe we were ahead of the game I don't know but we sure sure need this we need to get going on 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 equity and inclusivity and diversity issues wow yeah. so. uh, Gary just on this whole implementation of traditional calendar this I'm presuming is feeding into our September 30 deadline uh, to report on our LCAP substitute document yes. I don't know what it's called. And so um, do we have a, uh, are, is there certain input that we're, that we're looking for or required to have from community stakeholders uh, for that document? I can't remember what it's called. Uh, implementation. Learning plan, continuity. Learning, learning continuity plan. Thank I'll you. defer to Cliff on that one. You want to jump in, Cliff? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, we got two things going on in this room. Um, yeah, the learning, learning continuity and attendance plan. So as, as soon as we get school kicked off next week, we're gonna be you know, wholly focused on that. A lot of work you know, has, has been done with our committees over the summer, but we need to involve more stakeholders, uh, including the public and parents. So we're gonna be setting up meetings, public meetings, and going over all the components that are required, which includes some of the things you've already mentioned. Um, you know, serving our, our students uh, in need and at risk in special populations, as well as providing internet access and confirming that we're doing that for every student that have access to the online learning. So we'll, we'll be setting those up soon and going through that in the month of August. It needs to be to the state by September 30th. So we've got to get it completed in front of the board in September, you know, well before that deadline. 
lot to come lot to cover in the next in the next couple of meetings okay can i just say that i uh, thank you for um the work that you all have been doing um i mean <laughs> it's just like heroic and uh cliff and jason thank you for those webinars for the parents for distance learning is it um, possible to hear those yeah I, they're recorded it, they are so yeah. we're, we're processing them right now and uploading them to youtube and we're going to share those out okay so is it is it a matter of just sending a link or they need to well, be uploaded. It's, it's processing the video you know editing a little bit putting it back up yeah we're gonna we're gonna get it done this weekend find it on the web page or yeah we're gonna put it on the web page we're also going to email all families with the links to both webinars Okay, so board members too. Of course, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I would really, really encourage you to to um, to look at those. Um, you teachers were phenomenal in in going over a lot of the issues that parents had asked questions okay. about. Well, and then if if I could just add, you know, all the work we we did with our groups over the summer was in preparation for what's happening right now. So our teachers are coming back after a summer in the middle of a pandemic and being overloaded with information and changes. And our counselors as well have had to, had to react to some crazy circumstances. So all of those folks are, you know, under, you know, under pressure right now and working really hard to get things off on the right foot for all of our families. So just want to give a shout out to all of them as well. This is a you know trying time for everyone and families as well and students and we're looking forward to getting getting things started. Well that also all of the all of the families and participants that have been in all of these meetings. This is yes, thank you really so much. Wonderful. Appreciative. Yeah. It's really amazing. We, we don't have um, items to go back into um, to closed session. Okay. So I think I'm going to officially adjourn the meeting. I just pounded my desk. Bye everyone. <laughs>